always look worst when I'm filming. Don't fall. Hi, I'm Miguel Garcia and I have a video about Miguel Garcia for 109 people. Yes. Today, we're gonna talk about, I don't know how cool that transition was, but meh. Today I'm gonna be talking about my ukulele because it's something that I don't really talk about even to friends. People just know that I play it, but not many people know what I play on it or why I do it. And I thought that would make an interesting video. I'm gonna... Nah, I'll just I'll hold it like this. It's my baby. I genuinely really like the ukulele. Let's start at the very, very beginning. So, my dad really wanted me to play guitar, and I'm like... Mm, I don't really like guitar. Honestly, I don't really like guitar that much because I feel like there's a stereotype that everyone who plays guitar is usually a guy who like wants to like prove to the ladies that like I'm such a good singer, I'm like such a good songwriter, like mm, I'm so hot. And I'm like, ew, that's not me. He really wanted me to learn how to play guitar so I could play in his band because yes, my dad has a band. But the thing is, they don't play music that I like. They play a lot of Mexican music because plot twist. I'm Mexican. This is no shade to Mexican music, but all of the cumbias and norteñas that they play, they all sound the freaking same. And they're all super loud. Not my thing. One time we went to Guitar Center, just because it was a quick trip, and I was little, and I saw this little guitar, and I was like, it was so cute. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is, I'm, Dad, can I play that? And he was like, you don't got money. And I was all like, you right. I'll get back to you on that. Fast forward a couple years later, I was watching a couple YouTube videos. One of the YouTube videos, they actually play their intro. They like play their intro on this instrument. And I was like, man, now I really want to play it. And the more times I saw the ukulele, the more I was desperate to play it. And then I set myself a goal. I'm gonna buy one. And I got my very first ukulele. It was the cheapest one I could find because ukuleles are actually kind of expensive. It was only $20 and it sounded like $20. This was the very first ukulele I ever bought. It's, um, a little beaten up. Also, off camera, I spent a while just trying to get this thing to sound better. Problem is, I had no instruction of how to learn it. I just bought it. And also, another fun fact, when I ordered it, it literally took a month to get here. It said it would take a month to get here when I ordered it, but I didn't think it would actually take a full month. A week would go by and I'd be like, oh, it's still not here, oh wow. Another week would go by, oh, it's like literally not here. Another week would go by, oh my gosh, what, what, why isn't it here yet? And then another week would go by and be like, they must have forgotten about it, like, they forgot. And then it arrived and I was the most enthusiastic person ever. I also didn't know how to tune it, so it literally sounded awful. And I, like, learned one strumming pattern. It was... That's all I learned while I had this. And then when I finally got my plans to finally get an actual one, because it was like, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself. If I'm gonna learn how to play this instrument, I'm gonna like actually learn how to play it and not just half-ass it. Like, I'm not just gonna get a cheap one and expect to know everything. Cause a quality ukulele will take you a long way. So I actually downloaded a tuner on the app because <laughs> that exists. It was so easy. I literally could have done that. I would have saved myself a lot of time and frustration because it wasn't sounding right. And with that, I learned my first three chords, including F. That's not F. C. G. F. Oh, that, that's it. Those are all the chords. That's all, that's all, that's it. At the time, it was literally Literally. I ended up giving this ukulele to my brother because um, he seemed to like it a lot more. But when we finally went to Guitar Center, I finally got to pick out. And there were a lot of options, including little ones, big ones, extra big ones, which were like absurdly big. There were ones that were $30, there were ones that were $200, and I only had $90 that I saved up. I looked through them all, and I actually just wanted a traditional one. I wasn't gonna go crazy and get one that looked like a watermelon, though that does sound interesting despite me not liking watermelon. I just got a classic traditional one, which I eventually scrapped the idea and decorated. This is what I got. In case you're wondering, this string is actually my DIY, because some ukuleles you actually got to pay a little extra more, so you could attach a strap that you could put on, and some professionals are actually like that, but I just diy the string. If you watched my um, original song, which you definitely should, because I worked really hard on that and it actually means a lot to me. I didn't have the strap, but I find the string is actually very beneficial when you want to play it. Because when you actually play it while standing, it can tend to like slide down, and no one wants to do this. 
That's not a good performance. I'm not sure what ukulele this is, but you can see that that's what it says on the inside. I also chose to decorate it because I am really annoying and only like things that are customized to me. Also, I really like stars. I forgot my necklace. Stars are very symbolic to me. And you will not believe all the advancements I- uh, words. You will not believe all the advancements I made when playing this. I went from learning C, G, F to learning C7, G7, G minor, A, A augmented. I learned F6. I, I have this gem right here, which I find very annoying. I was learning simple songs that only included like three notes. I got some more challenging songs by Dodie Clark. I love her. These songs are harder. Dodie Clark just writes such difficult songs to get down. I was beginning to learn new songs and I was excited about it because I really like wanted to learn and it took me back to when I was younger and I was like, I really want to learn how to play it. And I did. I did it on my own. But there was something that struck inside of me and that was I should write my own music. And so I began to write and experiment with my own. My very first song I ever wrote is up on YouTube right now. It's terrible. I wrote it in an hour. It's three chords and you only use two of them because the third one you use at the very end. I can still play it, but I refuse to play it in front of people. Gosh, that was a choice. So I kept writing more songs. What I realized was writing songs, oftentimes my songs would sound just like someone else and it wasn't me. And I was bummed because it was like, I just wanna sound like myself. I don't wanna be somebody else. And it's hard because when you write music, sometimes you think you came up with it, but in reality, it's someone else's material and you're like bummed because you felt really good when you came up with it. Came up with it. And I just kept working on it because I was like, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna write my own song and it's gonna be great. Then I began to feel some type of way and i think that's how most people write songs so they just feel some type of way and they just write it all in words and then add chords to it and then it becomes a song finding the right chords is always the most challenging part in your mind you might know what you want it to sound like but it just might not translate when you're playing it strumming pattern might like make it too cheery or may make it too sad and you're like i can't do this it's too much stress i can't do it all but while writing it i got like the strumming pattern i wanted but I just didn't know what chords to write. It just came. I know that's terrible. Like that's not that's not great advice on how to write your own song. But it legitimately just came to me, and I was like, perfect. And I did it, and it finally sounded like me, and it was my own song, and I was excited about it. And then it came time to share it with other people. So I was like, people need to hear. And my subconscious was like, but people don't need to hear. And then I began to fall into spirals of criticism and I was like, well, okay, people might hate it, people might like it. But I, I had to realize that that's completely okay. If people hate it, it's fine. If people like it, that's great. But it's not, they're, they're not forced to like it. They're allowed to have an opinion. At the end of the day, the song, which by the way, it's on YouTube now. Go ahead, watch it, it's good, I'm proud of it. At the end of the day, the song makes me happy and that's all that matters. And I was really satisfied with it. And I finally decided to share it because I spent so many nights singing it to myself before I went to bed because I use music as meditation. I go to bed, before I go to bed, I just sing what I feel and my emotions ease right out. It's great. You guys should try it. I would like to know if people do this. I finally shared it and it was very personal and I was like freaking out the whole time. My friend liked it and I was happy about it. No one else really said that they liked it, but you know what? That's fine. It's my YouTube channel. I post whatever the fuck I want here. Not to use profanity, but I will post whatever the fuck I want. And I have other songs that I've written that I'm also happy about and I would like to share them eventually. Not now because you know, Maybe, maybe soon. Hmm. I think that just about does it for this week's video. Thank you all so much for watching this video because I don't really would enjoy watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe because I'm very, very desperate. And I'll see you all in the next one. You know, it's like the very last second that I come up with something clever to do. Have we reached the 10 minute mark?